So recently there's been quite a bit of buzz about adding a silicon boots to the hot end of your 3D printer to help stabilize the temperature of the hot end. It doesn't matter what your hot end design is, whether it's this or a J-head or whatever, it doesn't make any difference. Basically the cooling fans can sometimes cool the block down and then depending upon the firmware that's inside your machine it might lock itself out and turn off the heater or it might lock itself on and lock the heater on. I don't know, I haven't had any of those problems myself. But I have seen people talking about using uh, silicon rubber boots around their hot ends to uh, basically insulate the hot end and keep the that cold air from the cooling fan from cooling down the hot end. And the really the easiest way to do that, no matter what kind of hot end you've got, uh, is to just use silicon rubber putty. This is cheap stuff that you can buy at any hobby store and you can buy it online, you can buy it in smaller amounts or bigger amounts. I've also used Smooth On stuff and I've used the Sil Packs, Sil Putty. For over 25 years I've used silicon putties and what's nice about them is, is you literally take out equal amounts and they color them just so that you know that when they're mixed all the way. Equal amounts of part A and part B, you mix them together in your hand, it feels just like Silly Putty. If you've never played with Silly Putty then it feels like a soft clay. Mix them together till it's a uniform color. Smear it around whatever object normally you're making a mold to cast more of. In this case, we're just encapsulating a hot end. Just put it around it and don't worry about where it is because it's not going to stick to it. You can yank it off. You can cut it real easy with a razor blade. Uh, most hot ends you want to make sure, you know, where this goes into the block. You want to make sure that you don't fill that in because it's important to get air movement during that thermal break between the hot end and the cold part of the block. But if you do get putty there, it's really no problem. You just come back with your blade, trim it. You can even just cover up the whole uh, extruder tip itself and then come back later and just cut off the end and have your extruder trip. So anyway, you, can, uh, you could retrofit any of your 3D printers just using silicon putty. You're going, well, what's the temperature range on this stuff? Well, the silicon putties normally have a 500 Fahrenheit to 600 Fahrenheit maximum temperatures. They're used in baking and all kinds of stuff. And what's that in Celsius? Well, that'd be 230 degrees Celsius to 340 or so roughly Celsius as maximum temperatures. So you're not going to have a problem with overheating with it on your machine. It can take the temperature. It's easy to remove. Can't damage anything. It's inexpensive. If you uh, know someone that works in a dental office, they can probably give you, because you only need two small marble sized pieces, a marble of part A and a marble of part B. Uh, the dental offices use it all the time for taking uh, teeth impressions to make crowns. So, in fact, even if you were just a nice patient and you went into your dental office and simply asked them for a marble size of part A and part B of their silicon putty that they use for crown impressions, they'd probably give it to you for nothing. So. It's a little upgrade you can probably do to your 3D printer for little or no money and because it uh, uh, adheres to any size or shape, you can use it on any, any type of hot end. You're not locked into any style or locked out and you don't have to try to track down one. Now, that is if you think there's any validity in, in doing some sort of thermal wrap around your hot end. If you've been having problems with your machine maintaining temperature or or other things that I've heard about. Personally, I haven't experienced any of that, and hopefully I won't. But here's an easy solution if you do need to uh, make your hot end more secure.